I need to fill this empty slot in my edit. The sequence this is part of is almost completed. I have created all the shots around it, some fully completed and some still in an animatic state, but still defined enough that the edit flows. It's a quick edit of a lot of climbing content and a montage of shots that gives us a sample of the atmosphere and the process these two guys experience being out in nature working on their climbing project. I've made this 3D scene where I can just grab my characters from, rigged and ready to be slotted into new scenes. This character rig is extremely basic, just a joint structure that's weight mapped onto the character. I've grouped all the geometry of the character into a layer that I can lock, and that just makes it easy when animating. Now I can select the joints by clicking on them, and then rotate them to pose the character. For some scenes I might add IK chains to the character's legs and arms, but for a lot of this I actually prefer just to hand animate and hand keyframe the joints, and have complete control over the placements of each of them. For this last shot in the sequence, I actually want my character to do something different than climbing. So I will have him seated on a rock eating a sandwich. Kind of a random shot in there, but I feel it's part of the experience. You know, even simple food becomes special when you're really hungry after a full day out. I begin by just trying to find the right pose for how he sits. This 3D animated pass will only be the first stage in the making of this scene. After this has been made, I will then draw over it and turn it into what appears to be fully 2D animated. I need him to hold on to a sandwich, so let's make a quick model of that. It's only a reference for when I'm drawing later, so it doesn't have to look fantastic. I'm thinking he's eating one of these schnitzel sandwiches. This is something you get in the local bakeries here in Austria and what I would sometimes bring with me. I just like including things that feel accurate to my own experience rather than some generic sandwich. I will borrow a rock from another scene I created where we look down onto the boulder from above. This has a lot of nice shapes in the rock that can work as a placeholder for what he is sitting on. The final background will be painted once the shot is defined, but it's good to have these assets to play around with and for building a composition. It sets up the scene and then it's easier to find the right camera angle. For the animation, I can start by just finding the proper keyframes that describe what I want him to do. Then I can finesse it a bit after that if I want to. Let's have him give the sandwich a proper bite and then lower it down as he looks up and out over the landscape. This shot is just 55 frames, so just over two seconds long. Just a simple action will work. As I said, I will do a lot of work in the 2D animation that goes on top of this, so the mouth and him shooing and all that can come later. Here I just want to capture the main acting and see it working in the edit. A lot of the shots in the film have handheld cameras, and especially this sequence is quite fast moving with zooms and motion coming from the cameraman, so I'll begin close here and zoom out as we settle on the wide view of the character as he looks up. This takes a bit of playing around with until I'm happy. Let's export that and test it out.
I like to flip it horizontally just to check that the character's pose doesn't look too odd. It often helps to do so to get a fresh look on the composition and the elements in it. Now how do we turn this into something that looks more like this? The first thing I do is to export a version of the 3D scene where the camera is static and wide so that it covers the entire viewing field of the animated camera. I want to do the 2D animation statically so that I don't bake in the wild zooming that we have going on here. I will apply that again at the very end. Then I can bring that into Photoshop and begin the drawing process. I'll do a full line pass first. This is the most important step in reducing the 3D look of it all. The 3D animation is just a perfect underdrawing, you could say, that I can take as much info from as I want. By drawing a full pass over it, I remove the look of it being 3D or having strange 3D artifacts that perhaps a line or sketch shader would produce. It just gives me complete control of where I place the lines. It's of course not an instant process, but no 2D animator expects that anyways. This is where I can work on the little details, like adding the biting action and the chewing motion, for example. His legs are never moving, so they can be on a separate layer from everything else and just stay static throughout the entire timeline. So they're just one drawing, really. Once the entire timeline has been drawn, I make another pass where I convert every frame into color. This is often the slowest step in the entire process. With some simple 3D geometry, I can play around with how my background should look. This shot has no reference from an actual location, which some of my other shots have. I just need some out of focus forest on the mountainside behind him here. So I'll make something up for this, but I tend to prefer painting from reference from a real location, as it just informs me so much more about lighting and how the landscape looks. With the camera motion added back onto the 2D scene, this is done in After Effects, we now have this quick shot completed. Thanks to my Patreons for their support. I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.